Howdy campers, welcome to your fifth React tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about state. Okay, so in the last tutorial I said there were two main ways we can work with data in React. First by using props and also by using state. Now we've already had a look at props where we pass in the properties here on the component tag and then we can access those properties within the component like this. Now in this video I want to show you about state and we don't pass state into the component, we define the state within the component itself and then we can access the state properties in that component. So let's get rid of these dudes first of all, we're not going to use them and get rid of them on the tag as well and I'm also going to strip out this stuff as well. Okay cool, so what we do first of all is define an initial state of the component. When the application starts, what is the state of it? Okay, What data does it have within it? And we do that by using a method within this component. Now, I said when we first created this component, it only requires one method, and that's this render method right here. So we're going to create another one now called get initial state, which is going to initialize the data or the state of this component. So what I like to do when I use various different methods within a component is just comment them at the end just to say what they are. So it just looks a little easier on the eye. So I'm going to say render. And we're going to create the get initial state above that. So get initial state. And this is a function. And this function is going to return an object. Okay, so within this object is going to be all of our data, our state for this component. I'm going to put a comma there. So since I want to start padding out our to do list, I'm going to give this a property called to do's. And this is going to be an array. And in this array, we'll just pass some things in, some different strings. So wash up, uh, then eat some cheese. That is very appropriate, always appropriate. And then take a nap. Okay, cool. So that's our property on the state. And we could add various different properties as well. I could say something like age, I don't know, 28, and various other things. But for now, I just want to add one property to this object right here, this state object. So now we can access this data on the state of the component within this render function if we want to output it to the screen, to the browser. So let's do that. So I'm going to give this an ID first of all, and I'm going to give this ID value of to do hyphen list. And then within that, I'm going to just do a quick P tag. This is a quick title. The busiest people have the most leisure. Okay, cool. So let's output this data within a UL tag and then each piece of this array is going to be output into an LI tag. So how do we access this data on the state? Pretty similar to how we did it with the props. So it's curly braces again, then it's this to reference the component, then dot state to reference the state object, and then whatever property we want to grab. So I want the to do's on the state. Now, I don't want to output the whole array, so I'm just going to say I want the zeroth element within that array. And then I'm going to copy that dude and paste it in a couple of times so we can output each value from the array. So one and two. So what we've done now is initialized our state by using this method and got some data on that state, which we've then accessed using this dot state dot the name of the property on that object and then the different pockets in that array. We've output that now to the browser. So if we see this over here, we can see all output in the browser. Cool, right? So you might be thinking, well, there's state and there's props. So when do I use state and when do I use props? Well, that is up to you. However, you'll find that a lot of people like to use them in tandem. So in a typical application, we might have a lot of different components. And normally they'd have some kind of tree structure. So we have a, comparant, uh, a parent component, and then within that we might nest other components, children components, right? So for example, right here, we might have another component which we nest called, I don't know, list component or something like that. List component, okay? And that is nested within this component. So much like we added this component into the DOM, we're adding this child component into this parent component. And we might pass this component some data, right? So we can do that via props. So we could say um, to do's equals this dot state dot to do's. 
So on the parent component, we're defining our state. This is the state of the whole kind of component, right? And we can change the state of it. If something changes in one of these things right here, we can update it on the state. And then we pass information down to other nested components via props. And we only pass the data that they need. So we might have various different objects or various different arrays or properties on here. And we only pass one of them things to this prop right here, to the list component. And that component can then only access this thing. And that would be immutable. We don't change the props or anything there. When we want to change something, we might have some kind of event which fires back up to the parent component. It changes in here. And then the updated com um, property is passed down via props into the nested component. Okay, make sense? So that's generally how we would do things in React. And it's going to become a lot more clear as we go on and create nested components. Okay, so you'll see this in action later on. So there we go. That's your introduction to states. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can cycle through this state data a bit more elegantly. So until then, don't forget to share, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the very next video.